Hi, I'm Megan. Welcome to today's live reading of I'll Love You Tomorrow by Julie Navickis, presented by Itsy Bitsy Book Bits. Join me for chapter one. Chapter one, Lauren. I'm sorry, boss. I can't come in today. Miguel sighed. You know I would if I could, but it's my niece's birthday dinner. It'll break her heart if I miss it. Lauren closed her eyes and rested her phone against the surface of the desk. No, no, don't apologize, Miguel. Family first, always. Drawing in a deep breath, her fingers skimmed the list of slowly dwindling bartenders on staff. She shook her head and frowned. No Miguel, Angela's on vacation, Tony is out on medical leave, and Carmen requested this weekend off. Besides, you asked for the state off weeks ago. I'm just grasping at Straws Hill. Straws here. Did someone call in, he asked. Lauren snorted. Brandon called in sick about 30 minutes ago. His shift starts in 10. Her gaze lifted to the clock on the wall as Miguel groaned. I'm sorry, Lauren. You know I'd be there if I could. A grin cracked her lips. Miguel, you've always been my favorite for a reason. I know you would, and I love you for it. But don't worry. Go enjoy the party. I've got it covered. <laughs> what are you going to do? Lauren giggled. Pray nobody orders anything I can't Google. Wait, he snorted. You're not... She stood, the back of her legs banging her into her chair as it rolled away from the office. It's me or close the bar, and we really can't do that on a Saturday night. Not after being in red for three straight months. Boss, it's okay, Miguel. Go enjoy your niece's party. Please wish her a happy birthday for me. Wait, I can prob... Nope, I've got it. Lauren tapped in the end call button and pocketed her phone as... The lights of the new restaurant across the street, food for thought, flickered through the window. The intercom on her desk phone buzzed and Lauren tapped the red light. Yeah? Lauren, there's someone named Greg Owens on the phone for you. He says he's the newest rep with our vendor for plastic goods. Nodding, Lauren inhaled. Yep, put him through. The line clicked over and Lauren forced a smile on her lips. Greg? Oh, hello there. Hi, Greg. Thanks for the call. This is Lauren Templeton, owner of Pier 92. What can I help you with? Just confirming your delivery of supplies on Thursday at 4, Miss Templeton. Got it. Lauren scratched the note onto her calendar. And feel free to use the alleyway on the east side of the building. It's easier for deliveries. Will do, ma'am. See you Thursday. See you Thursday. The line disconnected and Lauren frowned at the note. How much will this shipment cost? She pulled the door of her office open and marched down the back hall to the kitchen. The rattle and clank of the freezer gripping her ears as she paused to grab an apron from the hook. Her fingers twisted through the rough material her fingers twisted the rough material into a bow, securing the fabric around her waist. What are you doing? Lauren turns, meeting the quizzical gaze of gaze of her head chef Lewis. A bubble of laughter escaped her lips. Losing my virginity. Wish me luck. His eyes widened as she pushed through the double doors, navigated around a few tables, and hopped behind the bar. Janine tossed a dish rag over her shoulder. A grin blossomed on her face. Um, where's Brandon? Out sick. Propping her hands on her hips, Lauren plastered a new smile and surveyed the endless rows of liquor bottles, shooing Janine away with a head nod. Head nod. Well, go on, get out of here. She wrinkled her nose and frowned. Wait, are you... Tugging the dish rag from her shoulder, Lauren snickered. It's like no one has any confidence in me around here. Janine pressed her lips together and frowned. Pour this, pour that. I can't be that bad at it, can I? Lauren laughed and nudged Janine away. Now go on, you've been here since we opened. I've got this. Janine held her hands up and backed out of the small space. Whatever you say, boss. Her retreating figure ducked behind the double doors as Lauren returned her gaze to the mass of glass bottles. Each one sparkled in the dim lighting, their labels difficult to read. Browning, she dug into her pocket and whipped out her phone, tapping her best friend's name, Mavis, tapping her best friend's names, Mavis and Casey, into a new text message. She typed out, SOS girls, I need to cover the bar at Pier 92 tonight, and I have no idea what I'm doing. Experienced bartenders needed. Lauren, her gaze lifted from her phone as Ricky, the waiter, leaned over the counter. What are you doing back there? He winked. And in an apron? She hopped out of breath and smiled. Filling in. I'm out of bartenders. <clears throat> his fingers tapped on the counter as a smile appeared on his lips. No offense, 
but do you even know what you're doing? She rolled her eyes and held up her phone. I've got a few experts on speed dial. I'll be fine. He nodded. Well, in that case, his palm smacked the surface. I need an apple teeny, a scotch on the rocks with a twist, two glasses of the house red, and a Moscow mule. This one, right? Her cheeks flushed as she tapped a copper mug. Ricky grinned and pointed. Phone a friend, girlfriend. I'm just here to wait tables. Returning her gaze to the phone, she skimmed over Mavis's response. Former bartender at your service with nothing else on a, to do on a Saturday night, but watch your brother stare, have, but watch your brother stare at his laptop. Relief flooded her system as she initiated FaceTime. Thank you, Mavis, as she propped her phone against an ancient dusty bottle of whiskey. Her sister-in-law's face appeared on the tiny screen. What are we making first, girl? She asked. Maves, you're a lifesaver. How do I make an apple teeny? Mavis giggled and the video wobbled as she pulled the phone closer. Her eyes widened at the seemingly fun challenge. God, it's been so long. Gliding her fingers over her growing baby bump, a smile tugged at her lips. Grab a shaker. Grab a shaker. Lauren searched the counter and snatched an upended metal shaker in the shallow sink. Why is there no soap out here? Cringing, she rinsed it out and returned to the phone. Now what? Vodka. Pour until I say stop. Her eyes followed the line of glass bottles along the shelf until one with a red label glistened. Lauren tipped the bottle toward the shaker with shaky fingers, her heart racing with anxiety. Stop, Mavis giggled. Okay, that's going to be a strong drink. Get the apple schnapps next. Lauren followed her directions and tipped the next bottle, the sweet scent of apples greeting her nostrils. Cointreau, nodding her head, Lauren dumped the orange liquid in inside. Now what? Shake it, sister. She clamped the metal lid in place and shook the contents, her overzealous grip rattling the metal liquid inside with the fervor of unease gripping her heart. Okay, okay, that's good. Mavis held her hands to the screen. Screen. Just grab a chilled glass and pop an apple slice on the rim. Then you're done. She smiled and leaned back. What's next? A Moscow mule, Lauren groaned, yanking the hair tie from her wrist and securing a low ponytail at the nape of her neck. Ice? This is going to be a really long night. Lauren twisted the knob, her tired muscles pushing the door open as the garage closed. Templeton Manor welcomed her home. The grandfather clock struck 12 at the end of the hallway, announcing the hour like it had her entire life. She sighed and her aching feet padded across the wooden floors, each step forcing a creak to break the silence of the quiet house. Dumping her purse on the kitchen counter, Lauren yanked open the refrigerator door and grabbed a bottle of water. The cold liquid poured down her dry, scratchy throat as the muscles surrounding her mouth roared, protesting the endless smiles the last several hours at the bar had forced upon her. So fucking tired, she murmured, pressing the cool plastic of the bottle to her forehead. Her ears turned, her ears tuned into the slow drip of the leaky kitchen sink. Drip, drip, drip. Damn, my head hurts. Drip, drip, drip. From the depths of her purse, the ping of a text message broke the silence. Digging her fingers inside the bag, Lauren searched through the contents until she gripped the phone, her heart sinking deep into her belly as Mitch's name appeared on the tiny screen. Why are you just getting home now? It's past midnight. Lauren rolled her eyes, letting the squeeze of her heartstrings suck the air from her lungs, his question a knife straight through her chest. Why the fuck do you even care, Mitch? She whispered and ripped the hair tie free from her ponytail. Her thumbs pounded out. Are you actually home? Did I wake you or something? Leaning her body sideways, Lauren peered at the staircase, squinting into the darkness on the second floor in search of a light. The phone pinged against her palm. No, I'm still at Josh's. The alarm went off on my phone when he opened the garage door. Are you okay? A tired sob fell from her lips. The pinup sorrow from the last few months of their crumbling marriage burned her lids with tears of rage, fueling the ache in her heart. Dropping her phone onto the... To the counter, Lauren tumbled forward. Her cheeks collided with the cool granite as tears leaked from her eyes. Are you okay? She repeated, her words gripping her ears. A giggle erupted from her belly. The manic bubble of laughter dripped from her lips. No, Mitch, I'm not okay. Her ringtone broke the quiet moment, the screen of the phone bringing light to the otherwise dark kitchen. Oh, God. Tapping except on Mitch's name, she sucked in a breath. I'm fine. Why are you just getting home now then? His voice shook. 
Um, the restaurant. I didn't have a bartender tonight. Again, why do you even care anymore? So? I poured drinks for people, Mitch. She roared, exhaustion fueling the anger and hurt in her heart, pushing forth the underlying rage in her soul. Why do you even care? None of it matters to you. I don't matter to you, remember? He sighed. You know, Lauren, I'm really tired. I was just calling to check on you. God forbid I'm allowed to still do that. The call ended as tears returned, flowing down her cheeks and in their well-traveled rehearsed paths the last few months had carved into her skin. Fuck you, Mitch, she yelled and chucked the phone back into her purse. Just fucking fuck you. After swiping the bag off the counter, she stomped from the kitchen. Each foot pounded against the wood in the hallway until her toes touched the carpet of the staircase. Staircase. Lauren climbed as the anger in her body swelled, each footfall, in, <clears throat> each footfall inciting sweat to form on her brow and her head to pound with the ache of exhaustion. She pushed her bedroom door open and fell face first, on, face first onto the mattress. Her fingers instinctively reached out for Mitch's pillow, still fluffed, with the air of unuse. Pressing the material to her nose, she inhaled the now faint scents of pine and cedar, discernible from the last time he slept in their bed. Near her feet, her phone rang again. I can't fight with you right now, Mitch. I don't have the energy. Pulling her purse to her chin, Lauren rummaged the contents until Casey's name lit up the room. Ugh, it's like two in the morning for you. Tapping except on the device, her lips moved. Hey, Case. Lauren, her voice slammed against her eardrum, reverberating in the calm bedroom. I didn't see your text until now. We just got home. Casey yelled, slurring each word into the next. Uh, Case, um, are you guys all right? It's like we've been out celebrating, she interrupted. Lauren wrinkled her nose, smushing her face back into Mitch's pillow. I'm lying in bed, wallowing over my failing marriage with a barely surviving restaurant, and you're out celebrating? She cleared her throat. Um, celebrating what? Austin's new job. Austin's new job. Her eyes shot open as she swiped at the new flood of tears. Pulling her body up, Lauren tugged at the loose strands of dark hair sticking to her cheeks. New job, she choked out and mopped up the tears with the hem of her shirt. Lauren, Austin roared in her ear. You'll never believe it. I passed the Illinois bar exam and Casey got me a new job. He also slurred between giggles. You're talking to the new lead attorney for the Chicago mayor. Of course I am. Miraculous Templeton twin number two. Oh, um, wow. Congratulations, Austin. That's really incredible. Forcing her eyes closed, she tipped back and hugged Mitch's pillow to her chest. That's kind of perfect for you, isn't it? Suck it up, Lauren. Can't you be happy for your brother? It is. He screamed and missed another bubble of laughter. Never would have happened without my Casey girl, though. Pressing the phone to her ear, Lauren cringed as the device on the other end hit something hard, static flooding the connection. Ah, sorry, Casey laughed. Drop the phone. But, um, hey, I just saw your text. Did you survive tonight? Lauren sucked in a breath, her patience floundering in the early morning hour. Ah, uh, yep, Mavis helped me out. I owe her big time. Oh, man, I would have helped you, too. I'm sorry. With an eye roll, she shook her head. All good, Casey. It sounds like you guys had something to celebrate. But, um, hey, I'll talk to you guys in the morning, okay? She snorted. Go to bed. Isn't it like past two in the morning for you guys? Casey laughed. No way. Is it that late already? It is. With the last ounce of patience remaining in her body, Lauren exhaled. Go to bed, Case. And tell Austin congrats again for me. I'll call you guys later. Her finger tapped the red button as she tossed the phone across the bed before flopping back onto the satin sheet. As she gazed up at the ceiling, the pity in her heart roused for another party. Why is everything always so fucking easy for you, Austin? Gripping her head, she threaded her fingers through her hair, tugging at the long strands until they feathered atop the pillow. You and Josh, you get everything, and I'm left with a crappy restaurant no one wants to come to anymore and an inevitable divorce. She rolled, her arms flinging out to catch the knob on the nightstand. Tugging at the drawer, she gripped the familiar ratty fur of a stuffed purple dolphin. Finn, she whispered and pulled the ancient toy toward her heart. Her arms squeezed around his small body, tightening her hold until he conformed to the shape of her chest. Lauren inhaled and closed her eyes, breathing in the moments of the memory when Mitch first tossed the toy into her outstretched hands at Pacific Park, well over ten years ago. The recall shattered her heart. 
His sweet, proud teenage grin collided with her tightening chest and the memory as his strong arm draped over her shoulder. The image rattled the forever love living in her soul. I love you, Mitch Benson, she murmured into his pillow, tugging Finn closer to her body. Please don't leave me. I don't want a divorce. I just want you back.